Jeremy and Charlotte, congratulations on the movie. Thank you so Thank much. You. You and we're much. so glad you're here as well. What Thank a great you. evening. Yes. Uh, for my fans at home, uh, I was told that this is some blockchain related movie in a way. Can you explain how that works? Absolutely. Well, the cool thing about this film is it's it's almost like blockchain times two. So there's blockchain in the, in the theme, in the plots. So you'll actually have um, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and hackers and all that kind of fun stuff. But then also, it's actually being released via the blockchain, which Jeremy can tell you more about too. It's the first film in history actually using blockchain te technology as part of its distribution. So on July 10th, we'll actually be able to stream on the Veyview platform, and our partners are here tonight, and you'll be able to pay for the film, to stream the film using cryptocurrency, using Veyview tokens. The first time in history that's yeah. ever happened. So. Wow. So I read your statement, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that this could be a, a way to go against piracy, in a way. Yeah, and this is a very nuanced conversation, so what we're looking for is ways to... Piracy is really... It's a you need to put enough deterrence in place, and then you need to match technology that actually makes it impossible. The technology to make it impossible is something we're working on through um, some things that you know will be releasing soon. But a lot of it is it's, it's, super cool, but yeah. super secret. <laughs> but a lot of it is creating enough deterrence. So like we're logging a copyright to and a digital signature for every stream. So we under so we identify who's actually watched it. And so we, we're tracking the life cycle at the actual stream itself. So that's a deterrent that currently doesn't exist. And so with blockchain, we can do that. And then tying into some other... And the other thing, too, about ending piracy is accessibility. A lot of time, piracy happens because people just don't have accessibility to content. And that's the only way that they can get it. So if anything, this is opening distribution around the world in a real and powerful way so that people can actually access content that they want to have. If, I mean, if you look at there's a, a billion with a B unbanked people in the world, but a large proportion of them have actually have actually have cell phones. So with Baby, we're creating a tokenized economy where people can earn by doing reviews, by by fulfilling requests. They can earn tokens, and they can spend tokens with premium content within the same within the same ecosystem. So creating that kind of accessibility, you know, you, you, for piracy, you want to take away the need that somebody really actually wants to pirate something, you know. So that's one of the things we're working on. I actually invest in cryptocurrency, so this fascinates me. For you. <laughs> yeah. it could, now is a good time to invest. Yeah. <laughs> Especially where the market is now because it's, it's right. right? <laughs> we're, we're, in a, we're in an accumulation phase. All right. Now, um, regarding the movie, what is it about Jeremy's script that drew you to the project? You know, I've, there are so many themes throughout besides this burgeoning technology, which in and of itself is really fascinating. The themes that he was writing about for as an actor that I was able to, to tap into and actually explore these ideas of redemption, reconciliation, and of getting unstuck. I think that's something we can all relate to. I mean, at least I know I can. I've, how many times in my life have I gotten to a point where I'm in a rut? And a lot of times you don't even realize it. And then something happens, snaps you into a point of awareness that you're able to say, huh, okay. What choice am I going to make right now? And the strength is in that choice. It doesn't matter what choice you make, but the power is in that choice. And that's all written into the script. It's very subtle, but to me as an actor, it, it spoke volumes. And that was one of the main reasons I was so attracted. Well, I haven't had the chance to screen it. I'm looking forward to it. Your character is very like deep. You know, like a, a widow of a, a war vet, correct? Yeah, yes. So how do you approach that? That's you know, I think it's interesting because there are aspects of things that we can all relate to in life. And so there are easy colors that you can pull in. But there's, for this particular character, she's a war, uh, she came from a military family. Her husband was, uh, had passed away in um, combat. And how do you deal with that as, as a widow? I don't have an experience with that, let alone she had a daughter, a now six-year-old, who has never met her, her father. That's a completely different world and it was interesting to go through observe feel consider understand and start to empathize in as deep of a way as you know as Charlene can and uh it was quite an honor to help bring Josie to life um she's a really interesting character as a writer and director um what are some of the romantic dramas that kind of inspired you to write this and also what comes of the themes that you're trying to tap into or trying to take away or trying to convey with this story? Well, for me, I'm really drawn to stories of redemption and reconciliation. So I like to put characters out there who 
other people might think they can't be redeemed, but I think nobody's beyond redemption. And I think everybody deep down inside, if they really want to become better, that there's hope for them. So I don't think anybody's beyond, um, beyond attaining those things. So I always love films that have always done that. And, um, and so like from a romantic comedy standpoint, um, you know, I, I grew up watching these great films like Sleepless in Seattle and Pretty Women, you know, like these great, um, you know, yeah, you know, where people like there's hope and there's, you know, there's, there's a struggle, but there's hope. And, you know, they're not saving the world, but they're saving each other which I like. And then on, on the more esoteric level, I'm a huge Terrence Malick fan. And so, you know, he's kind of putting characters out there that are, that are complicated and that don't just kind of fit into a box. And I always love films like that because I want to, I want to think, and I want to, I want characters to make me reimagine my own relationships and reimagine when I walk by somebody and my first reaction might be, you know what, that person's, you know, not very nice or that person's this or that. To, to think that, you know what, but, but what pain do they have in their life? And what's their story? And why am I being so judgmental about them? So, I, you know, I always i am drawn to stories that do that. And I, I'm drawn to writing characters that do that. Last question for you, Charlene. Uh, having gone through this process, what did you learn as an independent actress? You know, I think every role that you take on, you learn more about yourself. And I think that's why many actors act among other reasons too but one of the one of the all pervasive themes of acting is self exploration and understanding because as you consider life from the perspective of someone else you consider life more deeply from your own perspective as well you're able to see things that in a more clear light i believe of things that are important to you of what you love of things that maybe where you places where you don't resonate and maybe why or opportunities that you have to shift or change or grow. And for me, that's that's part of um, one of the reasons why I act, um, is to hopefully tap into a deeper part of myself and have a better understanding of what it is that I'm actually doing here and why, and how I can hopefully in some way contribute to something much greater than I. Last question for you, Jeremy. What's your advice for other filmmakers, uh, producers out there that want to use blockchain as their distributors as well? I think, as with anything, education is really important. I think there's a lot of projects in the blockchain space right now that, you know, the joke is that, you know, you can start a lemonade stand and put blockchain in front of it and you can raise $20 million. And so I think that there is, you know, blockchain isn't a magic bullet. Like if you're, if you're going to use blockchain as part of your distribution strategy, it has really great benefits. You know, it has, you know, logging copyrights. Smart contracts can manage payments to the to creators and contributors, and it's instantaneous payment. So it really puts power back into the creator from a from a financial standpoint. But you still need a great PR team. You still need a marketing strategy. Blockchain is not going to handle all that for you. It's going to give you greater accessibility and greater transparency. But you still need to do all that other work that goes into releasing the film, you know, and distributing the film. Thank you so much, you two, and congratulations on the film. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.